One of the things that we've realized about Alzheimer's disease is its extraordinary complexity. And as drug development has gone forward, we've realized that it's going to take more powerful drugs, it's going to take drugs that affect multiple types of pathology in Alzheimer's disease, and it's going to take better clinical trials in order to advance drug development program and overcome this history of a 99% failure rate in Alzheimer's drug development. As I look at the last year and think about the most significant developments for Alzheimer's disease, I would say the advent of tau imaging and its more widespread use is among the most important things we've seen. We've had amyloid imaging for a few years, we've learned a lot from that, but tau is more closely correlated with the decline in cognition and the behavioral changes. So I think we're going to learn so much more from tau imaging in terms of the relationship of our therapeutics to intervening in the basic disease processes like tau of Alzheimer's disease. The most promising treatments in clinical development for Alzheimer's disease would certainly include aducanumab, which is a monoclonal antibody being developed by Biogen uh, which in a preliminary trial reduced the amyloid burden that was present on amyloid imaging and after six months of, of treatment stabilized the decline. So there was less decline in the treated group compared to the placebo group and it was dose related to the amount of drug that was given. At this point that is uh, one of the most striking observations in the drug development of, for Alzheimer's disease field. There are other drugs such as base inhibitors that we're also very excited about. It takes far too long and far too much money to develop Alzheimer's disease drugs. And there are several organizations, most notably the Global Alzheimer Platform, or GAP, which are aiming at building a network of clinical trial sites for Alzheimer's disease, uh, making sure that those sites function very efficiently, uh, assisting in the recruitment of, of patients who are already screened so that the screen fail rate is very low, uh, assisting with a national IRB, and trying to shorten those timelines for the, for the testing of each new drug, because ultimately we've got to test new drugs if we're going to get to those final approved drugs. And GAP is working closely with EPAD, uh, which is a European initiative that is along very similar lines so that we would have the ability to conduct trials globally once we have uh, GAP and EPAD working up together. This year at the American Academy of Neurology, Ron Peterson gave an excellent plenary session on the early diagnosis of Alzheimer's disease. What we know now is that the amyloid protein is deposited in the brain 15 or sometimes even 20 years before symptoms begin to appear in that patient. We've also learned in just the recent past uh, that the tau protein is also accumulating in the brain for sometimes uh, 15 years before uh, the patient begins to exhibit symptoms so that we can see that this biology uh, is evolving uh, in the preclinical phase of the disease. Then it becomes symptomatic, we realize that patient has mild cognitive impairment of the Alzheimer type, and then it progresses into Alzheimer's dementia. This is tremendously important because it allows us to do prevention trials in people who are cognitively normal but have these proteins in the brain. Wouldn't it be great if we could prevent Alzheimer's disease from ever happening? Yeah.